everyone, I'm Taylor, this is Joe, we're from Green Our Planet, and today we're going to show you how to clean out a hydroponic system before you either replant it to grow again or shut it down for your summer and take a nice vacation. So to get started, we're going to have a few simple supplies. Today we've got rubbing alcohol and hydrogen peroxide. These are going to be our cleaning agents. Hydrogen peroxide is an oxidizer. will kill any molds or fungus or algae growing in our system. And also as a byproduct, it breaks down into oxygen and water, two things that are good for your hydroponic unit. And additionally, we've got some simple little scrubbing pads. We brought some paper towels, so we might need those to wipe some things up. We've got a flathead screwdriver. You won't need this probably for every system, but for the one we're working with today, this is gonna help us to uh, detach a tube that we can use to quickly and easily empty the reservoir. And later on, we're gonna be taking some of the materials for this system outside to spray them off. So we're gonna be using a garden hose and a nice attachment here that will help us spray and blast all the grime away. So depending on which hydroponic system you're using, there's gonna be uh, slight variances in how you clean the parts, but the process is going to be the same as far as what we use and things like that. For this particular system, our lights aren't built in, so step one for us today is that we're going to be removing the lights, wrapping those up, and this system is actually getting shut down for the summer, so we're going to be uh, wrapping those up to put them away for a couple of months. You always want to make sure you unplug everything from the wall first so you don't come in, uh, run into any issues of mixing electricity and water. All right, so now that our lights are out of the way, we're gonna get all of our towers out of here so that we can uh, get our lower tray, all the weight off of that so we can empty, empty that out eventually. First thing we're gonna do is if you've got any leftover uh, plants or debris from the harvest. Your wicking strip might still be in here. We're going to remove these pads from our system and we're just going to go ahead and clear this stuff out right into the garbage. Um, rock wool and coconut core cubes really would take such a long time to break down and decompose that it's not really a good item to put in your compost, unfortunately. Uh, so that part we are just going to be throwing away. Uh, we'll do, we'll clear as much of this for this system that has the pads inside. We'll clear as much of these roots out with our hands as we can. We'll probably scrub those a little bit later and uh, it's not going to be uh, a big deal if you don't get every single bit of roots out of there because they're going to eventually, as they build up in there, act like the wicking strip. The company that sells these pads say you can use them for several years before you need to replace them even if they have roots growing inside. So we'll continue clearing out our towers and then we'll come back. We'll uh, show you how to sanitize these and wash them out. We're going to empty our lower reservoir here. So a lot of times these will have a little clamp on them that you'll need your screwdriver to loosen. This one we've already got loose here. So to detach this hose, you just want to hold firmly the top irrigation line up and you're going to want to kind of twist and pull this vertical line until it pops loose like that. It's good to have a five gallon bucket to empty your reservoir into. In this case, we have our system right next to a sink. So we, are simply going to put our water line into the sink there. Or this is the plug for our pond pump. It's right in the lower corner here. Want to make sure that everything's dry, your fingers are dry. And we're going to plug that in. So it will begin pumping the water from our reservoir out into the sink. And I've got my friend Joe down there on the other end of the reservoir he's going to just lift that up a bit to keep our pump underwater and that way we can drain as much liquid out of this as possible get it as lightweight as possible before we have to pick it up so i'm going to go ahead and unplug the pump 
as soon as I hear that air start sucking through. Yeah, at this point, we will just remove the pump from our reservoir and we'll pop that in the sink so it can drain. thing we're gonna do to finish cleaning this reservoir we're gonna get a good spray of this hydrogen peroxide in there this is where it really helps to have students or your garden club with their little small hands helping because they can get these pads in here and scrub real easily so when we're working with hydrogen peroxide, I always like to wear gloves because it's an oxidizer and it oxidizes and kills everything in our system, makes it nice and clean for us, but it will also oxidize you and turn your entire hand white and eat you alive. So wear gloves when you work with H2O2. We just scrubbed our reservoir out with our hydrogen peroxide and our little scrubby pad here. Now we're going to switch over to some paper towels or you can use a cloth rag if you've got those handy. We're going to pick up most of this uh, extra liquid and stuff that we've scrubbed clean and then after we absorb most of that with the towels we'll be taking this outside to hose it out for a final step of cleaning it up. Alright so next we're going to clean the uh, portion, this portion of our tower. This would be the same if you have a, say a more of a stacking hydroponic system with the lids that you lift up, where you can remove that. We're just gonna clean our planting channel, our planting area in the same way we cleaned our reservoir, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. We're gonna hit it with the scrubbing brush real quick. And then we're gonna wipe that out with the wet paper towel. Earlier we pulled the uh, planting plugs and roots out of here as best we could. We still want to sanitize it uh, so that it's going to be food safe and clean for our next use. Um, again, we're going to use the hydrogen peroxide. It sanitizes a little better than soap would and it's also going to break down and be a food safe material once, uh, once we're done cleaning everything. So this for this application, I've just screwed a spray top onto my hydrogen peroxide and I'm going to spray down my planting media. And then in a little while we're going to take these outside and we'll spray them out with the garden hose really good. They'll be all clean ready for the next use. All right, so next, next thing we're gonna do is clean our pump. Our preferred uh, pump to use the Active Aqua for the reasons that it has an adjustable water flow right on the pump itself. This one's also really nice for cleaning. You can easily remove this cap. There's a sponge filter in there. And we're gonna wash and rinse those pieces out. This pump actually breaks down even further if we just twist here. We can then pull that out. This is a magnet driven pump. So you have your magnet and a couple parts there. These all can slide right apart for easy cleaning. We're going to use our hydrogen peroxide. We'll pour that over. If there is any bacteria or mold or anything, we'll see it fizz up. When we apply this, this is not really fizzing, so it shows that it's pretty clean as is, other than the discolored water. So I'm going to get each of these parts. Then I'm going to use my brush, scrub everything up.
I'm gonna rinse everything off. And then we're gonna put it all back together. Our pump's clean, ready to either go back into the system for the next round of growing, or in this case, we're gonna rest until the next school year starts. I'm gonna spray out stage here. I'm real quick, just gonna spray them down with a little rubbing alcohol, and Joe's gonna come along right behind me Hose everything out, make sure we get it good, clean, sanitized. All right, so now we've got our parts all clean and sanitized. Uh, we're just gonna put everything back together. We dried a little bit with the, hand, with the towel, but we're gonna let most everything air dry. So, just like when we installed the system, we're going to put it, everything back together the same way. Last thing we got to do is hook our pump up. I'm not going to plug it into anything. I'm going to leave the pump wound up down here in the bottom where it goes. I am going to reconnect this line. So we're just going to take this up through the bottom here. Get it started a little bit and simply push that back up until it's fully secured around that uh, elbow connection. Our pH adjuster and nutrients, we're going to just store back here behind the system. You could put those into a cabinet where you know that it's secure anywhere where you'll remember where it's at for next year when you get back to using it. and. Then we're gonna take our lights. We're not gonna worry about hanging these back up on the hooks because they're not gonna be used over the summer. This particular system is gonna be resting right here. It's not gonna get moved around. So we're gonna go ahead and just place these all back in the bottom tray here. And one thing I like to do is I actually alternate these back and forth to where The lights kind of sandwiched in the middle there. All right, so now we've got all of our hydroponic system parts uh, sterilized and cleaned up. Last thing we got left to do is uh, clean up these little scrubbies and our system's gonna be ready for use next year when we get back to growing again. If you have any other questions about how to take care of your hydroponic unit, be sure to check out our other videos at greenourplanet.org.